Well, Colin Clark is the director of research at the Sufan Group and joins me now from Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Good to have you with us. Um, so what do you make of this uh, operation that took out uh, al-Zawahiri? Is it likely that senior Taliban leaders knew Zawahiri was living in Kabul? Oh, without question. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, senior Taliban leaders, including members of the Haqqani Network, uh, and, and it was believed that this was a safe house linked to Siraj Haqqani, knew that he was there. They run the country now, uh, and the world's, literally the world's most wanted man is in the capital. There's no way they didn't know. Uh, and is that then a major concern, that with the return of the Taliban as rulers of Afghanistan, uh, that country is, is again going to become a safe haven for terrorist leaders? This is exactly what counterterrorism analysts like myself have been warning about ad nauseum for years. And we're now seeing it come to fruition. Uh, from the jump, I've argued that the Taliban have been negotiating in bad faith, that the principles uh, laid out during the Doha agreement about the Taliban's need to sever relationships or ties with groups like al Qaeda were never going to be followed through on. And here we are. I mean, it's, it's just proof of concept that everything the Taliban said can't be trusted. And we're very likely heading back to a pre-9-11 situation where Afghanistan is a sanctuary and safe haven for transnational terror groups. So what's your assessment on what the impact of al-Zawahiri's death will have on al-Qaeda? Because many analysts believe that the group has been weakened by years of anti-terror strategy, that its ability to uh, attack uh, um, foreign targets has been severely degraded. Is that your view? Both of those things are true, without question. Uh, but I think the Zawahiri strike is important, one, symbolically, uh, in some form of justice for the victims of September 11th and countless other terrorist attacks uh, linked back to Zawahiri. We also have to remember that Zawahiri, for all of his faults, did lead al Qaeda through a fairly turbulent period in the group's recent history. He weathered the storm of the Arab Spring and then dealt with the rise of the Islamic State beginning in 2014 and still managed to keep the group as a coherent organization. So I think he needs to be credited with that. Yeah, one of the things um, that, as you say, he's credited with is managing to stop al-Qaeda affiliates from leaving al-Qaeda and uh, joining Daesh, joining uh, Islamic State. Could that trend now be reversed? Could we see, conversely, um, Al Daesh becoming uh, more powerful? Yeah, I mean, we really don't know. Both groups have been hampered over the past several years with the loss of uh, crucial leaders. Uh, I think it's going to be really interesting to see who Al Qaeda now selects as its next premier, whether it goes for a trusted veteran, uh, someone like Saif al Adil, who also an Egyptian like Zawahiri, or a younger, lesser known figure that the group thinks is capable of generating interest among younger generations of potential jihadis. Really interesting to speak with you, Colin. Thank you very much indeed. Colin Clark there from the Sufan Group.